Today we're reviewing the Voron V0.2 R2 Pro Kit from Pfizer. I'll walk you through some of my likes and dislikes that I came across during the build process. This is my completed build, exactly as Pfizer intends it. I've only made one minor modification and we'll get to that in a few minutes. But I absolutely love this thing. Although it's taken a lot of troubleshooting and required me to really dig into my experience in 3D printing to get this thing printing semi-reliably. We'll start with the kit. The quality of the aluminium components are fantastic. The extrusions are cut and then coated, which means you don't have any exposed silver on the end of your cuts. And there are a few places where you would be able to see that. Everything is drilled and tapped where required. The kit also includes a lot of extras that you just won't get if you follow the Voron bit of materials. These include the CNC milled bed, the CNC lightweight x-axis rail, which I haven't fitted yet. Uh, the top hat is 100mm instead of the 80mm as per the bill of materials. And you can't see it, but there's a CNC machined POM Bontech gear set in the extruder. It comes with USB and Ethernet extensions for the rear skirt, which I'll show a picture up on the screen. Uh, a USB Wi Fi dongle, unfortunately, the main board doesn't have that as standard. A filament runout sensor for the reverse Bowden inlet in the rear right foot. An RGB tool head LEDs. And finally, the sailfish bamboo like hot end that we'll discuss in further details. The kit is well packaged and includes all the acrylic panels that you could need, along with all of the screws, wiring, and small components in labelled bags. A screw box would have been nice here, however, I understand there being a budget kit. They want to keep the cost down as much as possible and I'm glad that they've avoided the cost on tools and not the printer components themselves. The linear rails are what you'd expect for cheap linear rails. They're, they're not perfect, they were quite notchy out of the box. Um, so I soaked them in IPA, dismantled them and repacked them with Mobilux CP1 grease. The, it did improve the smoothness quite significantly and everything moves as expected now. Uh, they're not perfect, but they do the job just fine and can always be upgraded later. I opted for the printed parts kit, as I have no reliable way of printing ABS myself. And I don't regret doing so. They're pretty good and they barely cost me more than a roll of filament extra on top of the price of the printer. The quality of some of the parts leaves a little to be desired, and I was missing two small parts, which meant I had to stop building to print those parts. The electronic suite is an amazing idea and extremely well executed by Fizek. The Catalyst version 2 mainboard integrating the CM68 core board from Fizek, which is a Raspberry Pi compute module clone. Interestingly, a USB powered tool head board with its own STM32 processor. However, the tool head doesn't use a conventional USB plug, but instead an 8 pin microfit connector with a 3D printed strain relief and a nice silicon sleeve wire. It's just a shame the wire is not black. The electronics are where the Fizek kit falls short just a little unfortunately. Firstly, I struggled to find any documentation for this tall headboard, which led me to have to figure out the installation for myself. After a few minutes going through leftover components, I figured out that I had a few uh, brass standoffs, which are what fit the tall headboard to the back of the extruder. Those same brass standoffs are then used to mount the cover for the cables onto the back of the tall headboard. I thought the way they did this was a brilliant idea. However, it could have been documented. A few hours into using the machine, I kept seeing issues with the tall head MCU. The STM32 has no heatsink or active cooling, and being backed up against the NIM14 pancake motor, it gets very hot, and this causes the tall head board to shut down when it reaches 105 degrees C. The only way to fix this was to open the lid of the printer, making it unable to print ABS or ASA. Finally, I removed the tool head cover. This also seemed to resolve the problem for a short time and I got a longer print. However, it failed again and I was back to opening the lid. Eventually, I tried changing the max temp in the printer config to 115 degrees. However, this only led to more issues. 
when the tool head reached anything over 110 degrees, it would shut down throwing an I2C error. This means the tool head will need some active cooling or perhaps even just a small heatsink stuck on. My next point of contention is the mini OLED display. The display works perfectly and does exactly what you expect. However, the encoder wheel, just using it, if you move it at any speed, it also throws an I2C error and shuts down Clipper, which isn't great if you want to tune your print settings on the fly using the encoder. I've yet to find a fix for this other than not using the encoder. And last but not least, the wiring for the heated bed doesn't fit very neatly out of the box. They provide a wrap around wire sleeves that's a little too bulky for the tight turns it needs to make. A braided loom would have been fantastic here and I'll be upgrading to one the next time the bed's removed maintenance. Everything else in the base kit is great, there's plenty of hardware and lots of spares. Much to my dismay, wondering what I'd missed off. Spare screws are never good in flat pack. Speaking of spare parts, Isaac not only sends you the CNC bed platform, they also include the extrusions for the stock platform. And they don't document this anywhere, so you're left thinking you've also got spare extrusions. I just want to touch on quickly about the print quality. This machine is capable of giving perfect prints at truly mesmerising speeds. Even my first print, for zero tuning using the default V0.1 profile in Orca Slicer, produced a fairly decent Voron Cube test print. After a little tuning, I switched over to printing ABS and managed to get this part. This is about the same quality as the parts that came with the printed kit. There are some layer lines in there. You can definitely see that it's a 3D printed part. It could definitely be better. I tried tuning it for a few days and started getting clogs. And then after a while, I couldn't get a good first layer. It took me quite a while to figure out that one of the screws in the sailfish hot end had actually come loose and I found it in the bottom of the printer. This caused the entire nozzle to shift and clogs to build up in the heat break. This was quickly solved with the one and only modification I've done to this machine so far and that is installing a genuine Bamboo Lab 0.4mm uh, hot end and their prints are coming out near perfect. I've yet to tune input shaper since changing to this hot end however this print was done with the bamboo hot end and it came out flawless other than some clear artifacts that input shaping will resolve. I was quite blown away by the quality and you can quite easily mistake this for an injection moulded pot. No two Vorons are actually the same. They're a DIY printer and even though I bought this one as a kit it's still a DIY build albeit as stock as possible as per the original bill of materials and kit components. So print quality isn't really a fair topic to discuss in a review. Your mileage may vary. So my conclusion on the Voron V0 kit by Fizek. It works. It's got some shortcomings that really need to be ironed out. But you don't buy a Voron to set it and forget it. You buy it to tinker with. And with some tinkering this thing will be an excellent little printer. And had it not been for its tiny build volume, it would be my new go-to printer which is why I've just ordered the V2.4 from Fizek, and we'll be giving that the exact same treatment. Should you buy this kit? Absolutely. Even if you throw out the electronics and fit your own, the remainder of this kit is excellent quality and still costs significantly less than self-sourcing all of the components. What's next for this little printer? Well, Big Tree Tech, LDO and E3D Online have graciously sponsored the upgrade path. So in the upcoming videos, you'll see a full overhaul of the electronics, tool head and motion system, as well as several of their quality of life improvements. I'd like to point out that I purchased this kit myself via AliExpress, and Fizek have had no influence on the content of this review. If you've enjoyed the content, I'd appreciate a like on the video, and consider subscribing for more 3D printer and make content coming soon. I will of course read and respond to all comments where possible.